Our lesson this week is the first lesson of the fall quarter. I'm going to hold the book up for you so that you can get a good look at it. We use the Union Gospel Lifestone Sunday School books, where in this quarter, this quarter of lessons is titled Two Prophets of God. The first unit of lessons running from September 1st through the 15th, we'll be taking a look at the faithful service of Daniel and his friends. We're going to essentially be taking a look at two prophets throughout this quarter with the the primary focus will be on Daniel. And then when we come to October 27th, when we get down to the third unit of lessons, we'll switch over and we'll be taking a look at the prophet of Jonah. Now, for all of you who have been following my sermons for the past few weeks, then you'll be very familiar with our Sunday school lesson this week, which is titled Daniel Honors God's Law. We are, yes, going to be taking a look at the conviction of faith as I did in my, as I preached in my sermon a few weeks ago. But again, what I really want to highlight here in our Sunday school lesson this week is the obedience of Daniel. As you have heard me preach before, obedience, your faith, it requires obedience. Where would we be if we were not obedient in our faith? Our lesson this week comes from the first chapter of Daniel. We're going to be taking a look at scripture that runs from the eighth verse through the 21st verse, where again, we're going to be taking a look at Daniel a man of righteous faith, a man of conviction. If you aren't familiar with Daniel, Daniel, he was one of 3000 Jews who had been carried away in exile to Babylon when the Babylonians led by Nebuchadnezzar, when they conquered the land of Judea, when they conquered Jerusalem. Now I want to take a look at some scripture that is outside of the selected scripture of our lesson for today. I'm going to take a look at the opening of the first chapter of Daniel so that, that you can have some background information as to what was going on uh, in, in our Sunday school lesson. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, we'll see there in the third through the sixth verse there. He had ordered that a specific group of young men be gathered in and be taught the Babylonian way. In other words, they were to be assimilated. Okay. They were to be taught the Babylonian language. You'll see there. They were to be taught Babylonian literature in order to serve in his palace, in the King's palace. We're told there in the scriptures there, they were also will note there, they were to be given the King delicacies and, and his wine. Again, this was all part of the assimilation process. Now, Daniel and his friends will see there in that passage of scripture. We'll see that they were some of those who had been selected for the this assimilation process to be taught the, the Babylonian way. Let's also note here from this scripture, this is very important. The Babylonians, they changed the Hebrews names. They changed these young men names from their Hebrew names to, to Babylonian names. Like for example, Daniel, he was no longer named Daniel. He was known as Belteshazzar. I want to be very clear about this. With, with the with what the Babylonians were doing here. Nebuchadnezzar, he was essentially asserting his power, right? He was asserting his power. He was asserting his authority. This is all about power and control. When, when people call you outside of your name, when, when they, when they refuse your identity, they are doing it in a manner to, to demean you. To, to make light of, of how you identify. They are again trying to assert their power. They're trying to assert their authority. They are trying to assert their, their control. This is why I don't, I don't take it as a laughing matter when someone is called outside of their name or, or when I am called outside of my name, when someone purposely mispronounce someone's name or make light of, of how they identify, they may take it as a laughing matter, but it is not a laughing matter to us because our name, how we identify, that is our freedom, right? When, when someone purposely mispronounce your name or make fun of, of who you are, they are essentially abusing your first freedom. The name that was given to you by, by your loved ones, by your parents, right? That is who 
you identify as. When someone says your name, I personally, I'm prideful of my name. I love my name. I'm named after my dad. And so I, I don't take it as a laughing matter because history shows us that that when someone purposely mispronounce your name or, or when they call you outside of your name, history shows that again, it is always being done as a mean to control. Now, as we now take a look at the selective scripture of our Sunday school lesson today, there in the verse, the selective scripture for our lesson, it opens with this verse where Daniel will see there he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That's what we see there in the eighth verse. Now, let's pay close attention to, to what he would not defile himself by doing. We'll see there in the eighth verse that he would not defile himself by eating the king's delicacies nor drinking the king's wine. Now, you may wonder, well, how would that, how would eating the king's delicacies, drinking the king's wine, you may wonder, how would that cause Daniel to defile? How would that cause him to corrupt himself? Well, in the Mosaic law, the Jews, the children of Israel, all of them, they were given, they were given an order, a command, instructions to, to what they were supposed to eat and what they were not supposed to eat. If you take a look at the 11th chapter of the book of Leviticus, you can see this, this law laid out where the children of Israel, they were forbidden from eating what was clean or, or well, I should say they were forbidden from eating what was unclean. For example, it was not lawful for the children of Israel to eat swine because swine was considered to be unclean. Even animals like eagles, we'll see there in that scripture, vultures, buzzards, falcons, for example, they were forbidden from being ate because they were considered an abomination. So Daniel, when we get back to the Sunday school scripture, he took a look at the king's diets. He took, he took a look at the king's diet, what was being offered to eat. He saw that it was unclean. And, and Daniel, what I, what I find so fascinating about this is that Daniel, when they was changing his name, he didn't take a stand. Daniel, he, I, I imagine, I have to imagine in my mind that Daniel, he probably frowned when they said, oh, your name is no longer that, your name is Belteshazzar. I have to imagine that he frowned and that he maybe grumbled to himself, like, oh, that ain't my name, my name is this. You know, I, I have to imagine because again, I love my name and, and, and if I put myself in his shoes, that's what I, that's exactly what I would have done. But when, when, when they said, this is what you will eat and, and this is what you will drink, I, I smile about this because this is where we see Daniel, he shake his head vehemently. Nope, I'm not doing that. He saw that the, what they were offering, that it was not clean, that it was unclean. In other words, he saw that it went against the law, the law of God. And so Daniel, he not only shakes his head vehemently that he was not going to eat it, Daniel, he takes a stand there and he says something. Daniel, he requested there, we'll see again, still in that eighth verse, he requested that he and his friends not defile themselves with the king's delicacies. Now, though he had did that in the 10th verse, we'll see that the eunuch, the eunuch liked Daniel. He liked Daniel a lot. But we'll see there that the eunuch, he hesitated to grant Daniel's request. The reason why was because the eunuch Again, this was a direct order from the king. And so the eunuch here, he feared that his head would be on the chopping block. He feared for, for his life, okay? And so again, what, what I want to note here from, from Daniel, now taking the stand here, and then the fear of the eunuch with, with Daniel potentially disobeying a direct order from the king here, I want to note the, yes, the conviction of faith, but I want to note the tenacity here for, for Daniel to, again, be willing to disobey a direct order from Nebuchadnezzar, to, to disobey a direct command from the king. I, I want to note the, the courage, the tenacity here of Daniel to stand in obedience, to stand in faith. Daniel, he did not have any desire whatsoever 
to disobey the law of the Lord. What I want to, to point out here is that Daniel, in other words, putting his life on the line, he was even putting God over his life. This is what it looks like to put God first in your life. Daniel had a, a desire, a desire of righteousness, a desire of faith to live by the way of God, no matter the cost. He was putting God over everything. He was putting God even over his life. Daniel's life could have been at risk here, but he again was not willing to sin to save his life. And again, that says a lot about Daniel. And, and I think that that is something that, that you and I can take away already from this, from this lesson here today. You know, we, we should never be willing to, to sin to quote unquote, save our life. Because at the end of the day, at the end of all of this, guess what we have to do? We have to stand before the Lord who's going to save our life then if we chose to live in sin, if we chose to, to disregard his word. Daniel, yeah, he, he may have feared for his life for a moment there, but again, Daniel knew one thing to be true. He would one day have to stand before the Lord and be judged. What, what, how, why would he fear his life from, from Nebuchadnezzar when again, the one who truly does have all power and has all authority would one day judge him, right? So Daniel, he spoke with the steward. We'll see there in the 12th verse, he spoke with the steward of the eunuch and he encouraged the steward to let him and his friends go 10 days on a diet that was consistent to the Mosaic law. And after 10 days, Daniel said that the steward could come back and, and that the steward could, could test their appearance as to whether their appearance was healthy, whether it was good, and that they could keep their diet or did they need to go on to the king's diet if, if their appearance was, was not healthy? Now, some of us, we, we may begin to think to ourselves that, well, Daniel, Daniel, he's, he's, he's waging, he's making a bet here on whether or not his, his health would, 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 would be good in comparison to those who would eat of the king's delicacies. But I would ask all of you today, is it really a bet? Is it really a wager when you know for a fact that, that, that the outcome is going to, to work in, in your best interest? Is it a bet when you know at the end of the day that in other words, that you are going to be blessed? You see, I, I want to make this very clear. Daniel was not putting God to a test. Daniel did not need to wager or to bet on God. You see, Daniel, again, he had faith in his heart. He, he had faith in the law of God as well. And so it wasn't a bet for him because again, he knew what his diet would do for him because guess what? Daniel had kept the law. He had already been obedient to that. He had already been eating consistent to, to what was lawful for him and his friends to eat. So the test, it was really for the Babylonians. Because again, something that we should understand here is that this, this eunuch and then his steward as well, they had bought into the king's diet being the only diet that, that would be good for someone. They had bought into that. They had been conformed in their hearts. Daniel, he was not going to conform. Daniel was going to remain true to his faith. In other words, Daniel was going to be obedient because he knew again something that we should know today. When you are obedient to God's word, you will be rewarded. You will be blessed. As you have heard me say before, you cannot live disobedient to the way of God and think somehow you're going to receive his blessing. That is not how it works. So this was not a wager. This was not a bet for Daniel. Daniel knew the outcome. Daniel knew that he would be blessed. So when we take a look at the 15th verse there, We'll see there that after 10 days, we'll see that the steward of the eunuch that he returned, he returned to examine, examine the appearance of Daniel and his friends, not to their surprise, but to his surprise, he found that they were in great health. They were in better health than those who had been eating of the king's diet. Their appearance, it was healthier than the rest. So again, something that I want to point out here is that this was a testimony, right? This was a testimony of, of the Lord and his works. 
that his works, they are good if you live in obedience to his word. Again, when you live according to his word, God, he will bless you. The Lord, he will reward you. Something else that, that again, I want to point out here is that with this being a testimony, their appearance being a testimony of God and, and his word being a healthy word, the eunuch and his steward, they are able to see that the Lord is good. And so something that I often try to point out to, to all of us who are God's children, to all of us who are of sincere faith, we are always being tested, whether you realize this or not. And when I say that, I want to be clear that it is not God who is testing us. God does not test us, but we are always being tested. We are always being judged by all of those that are around us, which and why it is so important that we be true to our faith. Because somebody is judging whether or not you are being faithful. If you go out and, and you do something that is wicked, they're gonna look and they're gonna see, oh, that Christian is doing that? Then it's okay for me to do this. It's okay for me to do that. Or they'll say, ah, oh, he's nothing but a hypocrite. I knew that they were liars. We are always being tested. We are always being judged, which is why I am always doing my best. I am not perfect, but I do my best to live in accordance to the word of God so that someone who is testing, so that someone who is judging me, they can see that the Lord is good. I want people to taste and see, as David said, I want people to taste and see that the Lord is good, that his way, it is healthy for the soul. I want people to see that because again, I know what God has done for me. And I know that his word and that his way, that it is healthy for the soul. Because again, in all that I have gone through in life, I still persist. I am here. I am making it. I am blessed. And so we'll see there in the 16th verse that the steward, he again, seeing that, that they were healthy, that they were blessed. He took back what was unhealthy for them and he gave them the vegetables and what was consistent for them to have, again, good health there. Daniel, we'll see there, he and his friends there in the 17th verse, we're told there that because of their obedience, the Lord, he rewarded them. He rewarded them with knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. So in these young men, they were very smart. They were very wise young men. We'll see there even more that the Lord, he gave Daniel an understanding in all visions and dreams. This would certainly be something that would come back and, and help Daniel out. This was a gift to Daniel. And again, it would help him out when he had to, again, interpret the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar. He also had his own visions that he received from the Lord as well. And so when we take a look at the 20th verse, uh, when Daniel was brought before the king, he again was standing as a testimony there. He stood as a testimony of the Lord, that the Lord again is a good God, that the Lord is a God that blesses us. We're told there in the 20th verse that he was found to be 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers in the kingdom. So what I, what I love so much about this chapter of Daniel and this story of Daniel is yes, the conviction of his heart, Yes, the, the tenacity of, of faith that Daniel had here. But again, it, it shows us and it shares with us a picture of obedience and, and the reward of obedience, where again, Daniel's faith, it was tested and, and it was tried. But again, he refused to give in to the pressure that the king was, was putting on him, the pressure of the eunuch and of the steward as well to, to conform. Daniel, he did not conform. And, and again, his faith, it was rewarded. It, again, it reminds me of, of what Jesus faced when, when the devil came upon him and, and tempted him in, in the wilderness. And again, we saw with Jesus the, the courage and yes, the tenacity as well to where again, we see a picture where evil desires for, for those who are of righteous faith, for those who, who desire to live in obedience, evil desires for us to live in obedience to its way. But as Jesus said, man, we, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Guess what happens if you choose 
to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You will be rewarded for your faith, okay? And so what we should take away from this lesson today is no matter how much the world tries to force us to live in a way that is disobedient to the way of God, what we should do is have courage, the courage to continue to, to stand true to our faith. We must be steadfast in our faith, right? And again, in our faith, what we should do is live for the Lord. And in living for the Lord, we should live with love in our heart, where again, evil tries to force us to act in a way that is malicious, in a way that is selfish. We should again move in a way that is of love, where we not only love ourselves, but we love all of those that are around us. We saw that with Daniel here. Yes, he did not want to disobey God's law, but he didn't want his friends, he didn't want them to defile themselves as well. And so he lived in a manner of love for himself and for his friends as well. So not only was he blessed, but his friends were blessed. That's something that we should take away from this lesson as well. We don't just live for ourselves. Yes, we want to get to heaven, right? But again, we must live for others in order for us to get there. Okay, in order for us to prosper, we need all of those around us. We need them to prosper as well. And that's something that I certainly hope that you take away from our Sunday School lesson this week. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the Newfound Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.